gun shop. It's range day, finally gonna get a little trigger time. So I had two guns that I wanted to work with today out at the range. I wanna get the uh, Burris AR332 Optic on my Gadsden Flag AR with the slide fire stock. I wanna get that sighted in uh, at least at 50 yards. And then all the way behind me on the bench in the back is the Smith & Wesson m and 10 with the Nikon M308 scope. Uh, it is a 4 to 16 variable power, has a bullet drop compensator reticle, and uh, I want to get that sighted in as well and do a little review of both optics. Um, for those of you hoping to see me just flip that Gadsden Flag AR into bump fire because it has a slide fire stock on it, and just tear it up full auto. Unfortunately, I'm gonna apologize and let you know right up front, I can't do that here at this range. This range does not allow full autos. And honestly, I can't blame them because you know you get full autos out, they do tend to tear things up even more so than, than uh, you know semis and, and other type battle rifles. So uh, I don't wanna lose my range privileges because this is one of the clubs I teach at and uh, that would be really bad. And out of respect for them and the club and its other members, I'm not even going to think about putting that in bump fire, no matter how much I want to. So uh, let me get loaded up, and we'll be back in a minute or two, and we'll get some shooting done. For today's test, we'll be using some Independence 5.56 55 grain full metal jackets. And uh, for right now, we're just going to be shooting at 50 yards. Nothing really, you know, spectacular or out of the ordinary, big old carpenter bee. We got a lot of them down here. So, let's get this puppy loaded up, charged up, and get to shooting. All right, so I'm gonna apologize in advance. There's gonna be a bunch of edits. I uh, forgot to bring my spotting scope, so I'm actually gonna be using the zoom on the camera as a spotting scope so I can see exactly where my rounds are landing. Uh, this optic has no magnification, so there's no way for me to tell from here. Well, it would appear that after sending eight rounds down range, a first group of five, no holes in the paper, second group of three, still no holes in the paper, I have no idea where this thing is hitting. So uh, I might have to split the difference and put on the 25 yard range just to get an idea of where I'm punching holes or probably what I'm more than likely going to do is just walk it in and uh, see where I'm at. I'm fairly certain that I'm shooting way high so I'll start way low and just bump it up a little bit at a time. Well, it looks like the rain and the wind is moving in. I was hoping to get some trigger time before the rain set in. Um, I'm gonna try and wait. Maybe it'll calm down in a couple of minutes. I can still get some shots in in between gusts of wind. <laughs> but I don't know, the clouds are looking pretty mean over that way and that's the way the wind's going. So we'll see how this pans out. See how we did with that one. Sounded like something fell. Good 
God. It's not even on paper. <clears throat> I do know that I'm shooting very low and to the right of where I need to be. So I'm trying to adjust X and Y all at the same time, which I really shouldn't do, but I don't know how far I'm off, so I kind of have to narrow them both in a little bit. I don't know if you can see this, but you can probably hear it. Um, the rain just kind of hit full blast. My targets are getting soaked. I didn't get to shoot my 308, my Smith M&P 10. Huh. Just my luck. Go figure. So the rain let up and I was able to get a couple more shots in and at least now I know where I'm hitting. I'm hitting on the target and I can adjust accordingly. So that shot string should put me right on the center line and then I'm still shooting high. I just have to adjust some elevation. So let me go over to the uh, M&P 10 with the scope and see where I'm at. Beauteous. I'm about one, two inches high. <clears throat> so I'm right on the center line and I'm about two inches high. <clears throat> so let's make that adjustment. We'll throw some more downrange and see where we're at. All right, let's go check. So two of them are an inch and a half inch high. Uh, the one inch is right on the center line. The half inch high is about an inch to the left. And the other one is about a half inch low and an inch and a half, or I'm sorry, the half inch high one is about an inch to the right. And the uh, one that's about a half inch low is about an inch and a half to the left. So I'm not going to make any adjustments. I'm going to throw three more down at um, the large center bullseye. And then for fine tuning, I'll move to one of the four smaller circles at more or less the corners of the target. of the rounds, the first two rounds I fired were both about an inch to the right. And then the flyer was wicked low and wicked way off to the right. So I'm not even going to count that one uh, in and amongst the group. So I'm going to make some adjustments, get it back on center and see where we're at.
Ah. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I couldn't ask for better than that. Let's swing the camera around and show you what we just did. Zoom in a little bit. Hopefully you can see the holes in the bottom left hand bullseye. Maybe I can zoom in a little more. Um, there's one immediately in the little orange one inch bullseye and one just to the right and low a little bit and one high to the left a little bit. And it's raining again. <laughs> so I'm pretty much happy with the, uh, with the Burris sight. I have heard some things about them having trouble maintaining a zero. Um, that's just one of those things that you test over time. Um, I got two rounds here. Um, I'm going to take the top left miniature bullseye and I'm going to bang this up a bit. And uh, see where we hit now. See if that banging, banging that around that much was enough to knock off the zero. Let's see what we got. Let's see if it knocked off. If the zero knocked off a bit. <laughs> Not at all. One at the five o'clock position in the one inch bullseye. And one at the two o'clock position. About half an inch high. So for right now, I am satisfied with the 50 yard performance of the Burris AR332 uh, optic. Um, remember, it is just the T with the dot for a reticle, illuminated red or green, depending on where you set it. Uh, so let's change things around and we'll get the M&P 10 loaded up and we'll leg out to 100 yards. We got the M&P 10 set up, we got three rounds in the factory mag, we got targets at 50 and 100 yards and the Nikon M308 BDC 4 to 16 power scope. Um, the M308 is specifically designed, the Nikon M308 scope is specifically designed for the uh, 762 by 51 NATO round or 308 Winchester, either way. And for today's zeroing and just all around shooting fun, we'll be using Federal White Box XM80C 149 grain full metal jackets. So uh, let's get this in the gun and see what we got out at 100. I like that. Um, I don't even need to move off the scope to tell you where I'm hitting with this puppy. I am one about four inches to the left and one round is right on the level zero. One's half inch high and one's an inch high. So I'm going to adjust my windage and send a couple more. You know when I shoot my M1A I have rounds that I 
specifically loaded for that gun to duplicate the M118 LR sniper rounds that our uh, military snipers use. And uh, in my M1A out to god awful range, those things perform wonderfully. Um, I've put a couple of them through this gun, uh, just open sights, and they didn't perform. But these 149s, uh, I think this is going to be the preferred round in this gun. The 149 full metal jackets. Um, three of them grouped together real nice out there, right out of the barrel. And uh, I've only done what I would call rough siding with this, never anything to fine tune it. So I shifted my point of impact four inches to the right. Let's see where we're at. failure to feed there and it looks like the rounds are hitting in the same exact spot as they were before It doesn't look like the point of impact moved at all. In fact, I just enlarged the hole that was four inches to the right and half an inch high. Huh. That's disappointing. So the only option is load up three more and see what we get. Wow. Break my heart. I have to shoot some more. <laughs> Not really. This bench could be a little higher, though actually. The seat could be a little higher. about an inch high and an inch to the right. An inch to the right and an inch low. Dead friggin' center. Shoot some more. I'm really feeling the urge to throw a target out at 200 yards and see how the bullet drop compensator reticle works. The only problem is I'm wearing sneakers and the grass is soaking wet now. So, <laughs> and that's a hell of a long walk and a climb up that hill down to the 200 yard range. Uh, eh, I don't know. We'll see. There's four orange squares in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to use the top left square of that group of four as my point of aim. Glasses are fogging.
failure to feed. That's more like it. And another failure to feed. I'm not sure as to what's going on, why this is failing to feed. But like I said, like I have said, or may have said, it's a relatively new gun. Um, it honestly has not been shot all that much. So it might just be break in. You know, we've all had that gun that had a lot of problems with and it just needed to break in till it shot reliably so maybe that's this one maybe there's something I can do to it I don't know I'll check it out when I get home and we'll see <clears throat> uh, same group of four top right square as point of aim Now let's use the top right of the bottom left square, group of four. And another failure to feed. And another failure to feed. But they're all right where I want them. <laughs> well, I am impressed with the scope. Uh, it zeroes nicely. Um, plus the turrets, you can pick them up, take them out of the adjustment mode, turn them to the zero, push them right back down and they lock into place on zero. Uh, it is parallax and diopter adjustable. Um, so I, I am impressed with that. I think I paid about 549, I want to say for this scope, uh, but it is a 4 to 16 power. They do have a, a 3 to 12 or a 4 to 12 that's around 400 and something, 439 or whatever. Uh, when I'm shooting at range, I just like more magnification. Um, I like that up close and personal sight you get on the target. So that, But that's a personal issue. So you know what, I think I'm gonna get my feet wet and I'm gonna go put a target out at 200 yards and test the BDC reticle. And I'll be back in a minute. So, I took the walk, my feet are soaked, I don't care, I'm at the range. I got a target out at 200 yards, I got five rounds left out of that first box. I only brought two boxes of, of 308 with me. Uh, I got five rounds left, I have a 12 inch sighting target, target out at 200 yards. So I'm going to swing the camera around, zoom as far in as I possibly can, and uh, we'll see what we get with that BDC reticle out at 200 yards.
There it is, 200 yards away. About six and a half inches to the left. But right on level. And a failure to feed. About two inches high and an inch to the left. And a jam with a failure to feed. and another failure to feed. This gun is not like in this Federal XM 80C. And another jam with a failure to feed. And another failure to feed. Oh, last round. Hey, so while I'm here, I got the target posted out at 200 yards. You saw me throw five rounds down range. And uh, I thought while I was uh, here, I would introduce something that comes in handy for anyone. Uh, for iPhone users, there's this really wicked cool little program called Mill Dot Ballistics. Uh, you do have to buy it from the App Store. It is not a free app, and nor should it be. This thing is amazing. Uh, you give it, uh, for example, I have the M80 sample 7.62x51, which is the 149 grain full metal jacket. I have the, uh, I have that ballistics profile plugged in here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and get right up on it. It gives you your 200 yard zero, 200 yard zero, the anchor point, which is dead center on a 12 inch target. And uh, it gives you your holdover in red. And that is pretty much exactly what I'm seeing in my bullet compensator reticle. Um, in the settings, you can go in and pull down the latest atmospheric conditions and have them calculated right into the uh, bullet sample that you're shooting and the profile that you're shooting. So uh, I threw five yards, five rounds. Um, 
immediately after I, I shot them, uh, Dawn and her best friend Dennis pulled up, and then of course it started pouring down rain. So I shut the camera off, um, they just left, and I'm going back. I got five more rounds right here. Um, even though the, the gun's been jamming on failure to feeds all morning, well, all day, it's actually like 2 in the afternoon, 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, I'm just really pleased with the way it's hitting with this ammunition out at 200. I'm really pleased with the Nikon M308 scope and the BDC reticle that, uh, that it has. I'm using the first notch on it, and it's hitting true to form um, out at 200 yards. So I'm going to re-zoom in on the target out there, load five more rounds up, and I'm going to work off this ballistics calculator, and uh, we'll leg it out and, and just throw a couple more rounds just for the hell of it. I don't care if it's raining. Any day at the range is a good day at the range. So I'm going to get my ears and eyes back on, and we'll go back out to 200 yards. Let's zoom out, and then we'll take the camera for a walk down to the 100-yard line. Well, the 200-yard line, 100-yard line first, and then retrieve that target, and we'll go up and we'll get the target from the 200-yard line. Here we are coming up to the 100-yard target. <laughs> um, you can see uh, this one and two of these in this bunch right here were the first ones I shot and then the rest just pulled in and then this one, this one, and this one were shot using this as the point of aim, this one, this one, and this one were shot using this as the point of aim and then this was the last big zero group that I did. So um, it's not sub MOA performance but I don't expect sub MOA from performance from any rifle with factory ammunition. Um, it's just the way it is. Uh, factory is bulk loaded and they don't have the time to pay attention and make sure every powder charge is exact and the bullet weights. So I am very certain that uh, I can reload for this rifle and, and get sub, OM, sub MOA accuracy out of it. So there's the 200 yards. You can just barely see them. You know, there's the top of the stands right there. That's looking back at the bench, 100 yards away. Okay, so we climbed up the hill, and here we are on a 200-yard target. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten holes, ten shots. <clears throat> um, like I said before, um, I'm not expecting sub MOA accuracy, although aiming here uh, with the BDC reticle. Uh, one MOA would be two inches, so I've got at least one and a half to two MOA accuracy out of this group the way I have the scope dialed in right now. So all in all with that group, I can't complain. Like I said, factory ammo, just sighting in the scope and uh, testing out the BDC reticle. Keep in mind this is a 12 inch by 12 inch target. So at 200 yards, I can't complain. I could really get that down to be super accurate with some, with some reloads custom made for that gun. Oh, and I forgot. So there's the target. And way down there, is the bench I was shooting from. So, <laughs> there you go. Now I gotta pull my targets and walk all the way back there and pack everything up and drag it home and get this video to editing. <laughs> so, I'll close it when I get back there and get the camera back on the tripod. So, finally trekked back from the 200 yard line with uh, the 100 yard line and the 200 yard line targets from the Smith & Wesson M&P 10 with the Nikon M308 scope on it. And uh, even though it rained, 
off and on the whole time I was here. I uh, still got some decent trigger time. So overall impressions, the Burris AR332 um, for its price point, uh, it shoots well. It zeroed well for me. Uh, like I said before, I've heard rumors of them not holding zeros. That's why I banged it around a bit. Um, uh, in fact, a friend of mine, Jonas, had one on his AK, and it just didn't hold zero worth of snot for him. Mine, even after I banged it around, seemed to be holding zero pretty well. Um, I'm not going to expect sub-MOA accuracy out of a sight like that. No magnifications, both eyes open. Um, what I did forget to do was I did forget to test the open sights that are mounted on top of the site um, that are actually machined into the housing. So I'm going to have to do that at a later date uh, because it's getting to be late in the day. I'm hungry and I'm going home for lunch. In fact, I think I'm going to call my favorite place and order some wings on the way back. <laughs> so uh, my overall impressions of the Nikon M308 at the price point, uh, I, if memory serves me correctly, I think I got mine for about five and a half, five forty nine, four ninety nine, in and around the five hundred dollar range. Um, definitely worth it. The uh, BDC reticle uh, is more than capable of taking your zero range and doubling it, tripling it, quadrupling it, all the way out um, to six hundred yards. Um, it also, one, one note about the gun, you saw all the failure to feeds I had. That's with the factory magazine in it. And uh, the Federal White Box XM80C, 149 grain full metal jackets. So uh, I am certain that I could tune that gun with some reloads to shoot sub MOA with that scope. Um, I think the next time I bring it out, I'm going to bring it out with factory and I'm going to shoot prone rather than sitting at the bench. Um, this stool at the bench here is a little bit too short, so I was crunching up on it. Um, wasn't terribly comfortable sitting here, so next time I'm going to bring the mat and I'm going to shoot prone at 100 and 200 uh, with that scope and see where it ends up. So that's pretty much it for this installment of the Basement Gun Shop. As always, I thank you for watching and I encourage you, if you have comments, write down there in the comments section. If you have questions, leave them down there as well like the channel, subscribe, even better. And until next time, stay safe and keep shooting.